What's up, everybody? Welcome back on a much sunnier Monday. We've got much better weather going on today, and everybody knows that the quality of the weather correlates to the quality of my lectures. So it's going to be a good one today. Don't hold me to that, <laughs> especially if you take my classes next fall. Um, we got a good, look, we've got a good full slate. All kinds of stuff to do. I apologize for this lecture getting posted a little bit late. We've had some technical technological problems going on. But in order to make up for that, I've got color-coded markers today. So take that technology. One point for English 375. Today what we're doing is we're finishing off our lectures on case, or at least that's the goal. We'll see if, if we want to come back to this, we can always take our time. <clears throat> but my plan is that this is the last we're going to cover the bulk of the case material. We looked at raising, and then we started to look at case in the last lecture, and now we're going to see it kind of why it's useful. Last time we had some good definitions for a case, and we saw it in action, but we didn't quite see how it helps us. And today we're going to remedy that. So our topic list, without further ado, looks like this. We're going to talk a little bit about that case, review a little bit of what we saw. <coughs> Excuse me review a little bit of what we saw in the last lecture. Then we're going to revisit our raising conundrum, right? These raising weird sentences that we had over here. Look at those later. Or if you remember them, that's fine too. And then we're going to revisit passive. Um, see, we're... I missed a step here. I see what happened. We're going to review case. We're going to revisit our raising conundrum. And more specifically, we're going to see how case can help us out to fix this problem. And then, if time, no, try not to go super long today, if there's time, we're gonna revisit passive sentences. Sentences with those passive auxiliaries, the <clears throat> B and E-N, like the panda was kissed. We'll use that as our example sentence. And we'll see how case actually solves a problem with passives that we didn't even know we had. So this part will get a little bit complicated and might roll over into our next lecture, but we'll see how it goes. Let's jump into case. So case, <clears throat> we looked at case in English, and again, this is uh, English grammar, English syntax class, right? So that's what we're gonna be focusing on, but I do wanna point out that different languages do case very differently. That a lot of languages, most, all, I don't know, off the top of my head, languages have cases but how they're assigned, how many they have, all of these kinds of things, whether they're on the verbs, whether they're on the nouns, all that kind of stuff can change. And we'll be taking a little bit of a look at that, some different systems than we looked probably this Friday in our discussion section. For English, though, we saw three cases. We saw nominative a case, said that strangely, nominative case, which is assigned by T. It's a, Smudging everything already. It's assigned by T and it's assigned in the spec TP position. What would be here if it had been drawn in? It's not for right now. <clears throat> it's assigned by T in the spec TP position. Again, that's nominative case. That's things like he and she. As opposed to accusative case, which is things like her and him, which is assigned by V at its sister position. It's assigned by V. This is supposed to say to its sister. So if we look over here, for instance, we've got a, uh, all right, I'll come over to this side. We've got a verb phrase all the way down here. This one doesn't have a complement, but if it did, that's the position it would be assigned in, to the complement of this V structure, the sister of the V head, and it's assigned by the V. And lastly, we have prepositional case, which you can no longer read, of course. <laughs> Prepositional case, you'll just have to believe me, that's what it says, is assigned by a preposition, assigned by P, and it's ass assigned to its sister, its complement, very similarly to V assigning it to its sister. Those are the three cases. Prepositional case in English is um, morphologically identical to accusative case. So you're still going to find things like to her, to him, to them, right? Just like you would find... Um, fed her, kissed him, those kinds of things. The her and him is shared by both accusative and prepositional. 
Because English is lame, mostly. So those are the cases and where we find them. And again, we're saying that case is being assigned in certain structural positions by certain items. Right? They're assigned by items, assigned by the to certain positions, to its sister. Assigned by items, assigned to T. That's important. And then we saw some examples briefly. Um, oh, excuse me. We found uh, some examples briefly of <clears throat> the case filter, which says that every DP must get case. Every DP must get case, must be assigned case. Let me turn the volume on my phone down so we are not interrupted any longer. All this isolation, I just don't even expect people to contact me. Okay, so we have case where it's assigned, and we know that every DP must be assigned case. So we kind of have another constraint. You can think of this again like the EPP, like the theta criterion. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now, let's take that our review of case, very briefly, and revisit our raising conundrum and finally get to the bottom of this. <clears throat> For our raising conundrum, we were looking at raising sentences, sentences like Bill is likely to smile or it is likely that Bill smile. We were looking at these sentences and we figured out a way to generate those through movement of the subject essentially of this subject, Bill, from down here to up here. And Bill is likely to smile. And what was that satisfying? Well, it was satisfying the EPP. Because this currently doesn't have a subject. Sentence is also like this. It is likely that Bill smiled. Where we just add the it. We add it up here. Once again, to satisfy the EPP. Two different strategies of satisfying the EPP. The problem, the conundrum, is that Given our rules, given our structure, we overgenerate, and we should be able to generate these two sentences. Bill is likely that smiled, and it is likely Bill to smile. It is likely Bill to smile. Of course, those are bad sentences of English, right? Those those sound pretty bad. I'll try to I'll try to stop wiggling around so much. Those are not good sentences of English that we could generate. And so what we did as our step one to getting to the bottom of this is we made some generalizations and we found this. We found that the tense, the T structure varied in this subordinate clause, embedded clause, in this embedded clause here, where these were non-finite clauses, like to smile, and there was finite clauses, like that bill smiled with the tense, the full. You can see the, the past tense getting going through the affix lowering and showing up on the verb here. And the pattern that we noticed is that when you get a non-finite subject, you don't get a subject. And when you get a finite clause, you get a subject. Non-finite clause, no subject. Finite clause, yes subject. And that these sentences are bad because they break that pattern. They break the pattern, right? Here's a finite clause with a that smiled that doesn't have a subject. Oh, that's gross, no, no thanks. And here's a non-finite clause with a subject, also bad. Bill to smile, right? We talked about this last time, those sound terrible. That's the generalization. Now with 100% more color coding. Cool. But we wanna take this generalization and we wanna make it a little bit more uh, theoretical, theoretically grounded not just an observation, but something that's motivated in our system. And what we'll find is that case does just this for us. It serves this purpose extremely well. I gave you the challenge last class of how we could see this generalization relying on case. How can we explain this generalization pattern in language with case? Hmm, think about it maybe for a few seconds. If you're extra motivated right now and you wanna like pause and rewind the video, <coughs> crack this code before I tell you, feel free. Otherwise, yes, I'm going to tell you. 
Of course I am. And what we're going to see here is that this generalization, what this generalization is telling us in terms of, my glare was really bad, in terms of case, give me one moment actually. Let's do an experiment. I try not to break my house. Like I said, due to technology, I'm doing this a little bit later in the day. Oh man, look how much better you can see the board. Not necessarily me. So the glare is a little bit worse right now. Anyway, hopefully you can see a little better. What we can say about these generalizations over here is that the non-finite ones, the ones that don't have subjects, are the ones that have two in T. And that subjects are where you would get nominative case. Subjects are where you get nominative case, right? In that specifier of TP position, which is assigned by T. And coincidentally enough, finite clauses, their telltale sign is having this two in T. Bill is likely to smile. So now we can go one step further and say, you can't have a subject of a clause that has two in T. That's what it means to be finite or non-finite here. And now hopefully we can make our last step and say that two in T, so this two, T-O, like to smile, when it's in T, it doesn't assign nominative case solutions, right? It doesn't assign nominative case. Non-finite clauses don't assign nominative case. How does this get us what we want? You may be asking yourself, well, it gets us what we want through the case filter. If non-finite clauses can't assign nominative case, then any DP that shows up in spec TP isn't going to get case. That was a lot of like random linguistics jargon. Let's go to more linguistic nonsense to fix this problem and take a look at what that looks like on a tree itself. So here I have written for us the sentence diagrammed out. Um, the underlying representation of a sentence like this, it is likely that Bill smiled. But what we're actually going to try and generate is this weird one where you have a non-finite clause with two in it, just like we were talking about, but we have the subject. So this is our setup for this. Again, we're trying to generate sentence number four. Number four, and we're trying to use case to make it so that we can't generate it because we don't secretly, secretly we don't want to generate it because it's un ungrammatical. This is the underlying representation. Blank is likely Bill to smile. This is a two. I'll rewrite that in a second when I write other stuff. Cool. This is the, again, this is the <clears throat> underlying representation of that. The deep structure or D structure we've been calling that. What do we need to do to this sentence to make it better? Well, we want to put our it is in the, it in there and spec TP to satisfy the EPP. So let's do that now. And I'll touch up my smudgy old tree as well. So I'm putting it in the spec TP of the higher clause to satisfy the EPP. And then we have this sentence. That's actually all we needed to do to generate it is likely Bill to smile because so far this is passing all our tests. The EPP says, I'm fine, I'm fine. Both clauses have something in spec TP and the theta criterion is also fine. Light is likely, this predicate is likely says, yep, 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 there's my CP. Smile says, yep, 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 there's my agent, the one who's smiling. So both our criteria are met and this fails. Now. It is past theta criterion, it is past the EPP. We went over this in the last class in more depth if you're interested in seeing how that works once again. But now, let's look at the case filter. Let's look at the case filter. So the case filter says, 
spec TP here, this is going to assign case to this one. So our it is going to have case. Check. It's a DP, so it needs case. What kind of case is it going to get in spec TP? Well, obviously, it's going to get not native case. I'll do this in a different color so we can see case. I ran out of a markers for our class on Friday. But Amazon totally came through, so now we got we got colors for days. All right, let's do let's do case in green. So, this tensed clause present tense is assigning nominative case to it. So the it is going to now pass the case filter. What about bill down here? What about bill? Oh, well, it also needs case. Conveniently, it's in spec TP, a place where nominative case is often assigned. But it's a non-finite clause. And our solution here was to say that non-finite clauses, clauses with this two infinitive here, don't assign nominative case. I'm going to write that down. I suspect you may want to do the same. Non-finite clauses don't assign case. That's our solution. So where this is a non-finite clause, it doesn't assign case to Bill. And thus it crashes because Bill is a DP and our case filter says every DP must be assigned case. And this one isn't, quite simply. Case filter says you need case and you don't have it. You failed. So this is our solution. This is how case helps us with this scenario. This used to be, just so this is clear, what we've been doing the past couple days. This used to be a tree that we could generate successfully and we didn't want to. It was ungrammatical. It was ungrammatical. This was a sentence we could generate and we didn't want to be able to generate it. Now with case, we have a filter that rules this structure out. So we're closer to our goal of overarching English syntax, which is to be able to generate all the grammatical sentences of English and none of the un ungrammatical ones. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What else was I going to say? What else was I going to say? Let's move on. Since I can't think of it, I'll come back to it. If I think of it in the moment, we could go over more of these things in depth, but again, we'll try and be a little shorter today. We're going to now see, so hopefully I've shown to you over these past couple of classes how case helps us and how case is assigned, right? This is, this is more than just about helping us. This is about, how figuring, about figuring out how the system works. And so now we have another tool at our disposal called case, and we know where it's assigned. Shall we do another example? Let's do another example and see again kind of how this helps us. To see kind of how this helps us. One way, additional way, which we can look at that this helps us, is it shows us that different heads, different assigners, assign case differently, right? So that some, the finite tense T's, assign nominative case, but the non-finite ones don't, right? So we can expand that and think about, think about this in terms of transitive versus intransitive verbs. That'll be a good place for us to get another example of case in action. <coughs> in order to do this, let's look at passive constructions for a second. We're going to use this transitivity example to lead into our
passive, for example. This is gonna, uh, I'm gonna erase this. My raising problem to give us a little bit more room for trees. This is gonna get a little bit complicated, this next part. So if it's making some sense up to this point, mm, let's do a basic example to reinforce this point and then we'll go into it a little bit more complicated. We'll do a hands-on example now. Obviously you're watching this on YouTube, so um, you know you don't have to do it. But for some practice on how we do case assignment, let's all draw the tree together for the following sentence. And this, the, we're gonna do a, a nice one with a nice transitive sentence with a preposition in there. We're gonna say, that this is our sentence. I saw the sunshine on Monday. It's nice, that's a nice Monday today. I saw the sunshine on Monday. I saw the sunshine on Monday. So let's go through together. Uh, I'm gonna write it on my board and then we will compare notes with you doing at home. Let's do the tree for this sentence. I saw the sunshine on Monday. And we're gonna, essentially we're gonna draw the tree just like we have been doing, like we've always been doing. Remember things like adjuncts versus complements. And then we're gonna see how case assignment works on top of that. So do a, a sort of normal tree for this sentence, if you will, and then we'll see case. We'll check. We'll check it. We'll go through actually all three of our filters then. We'll go through case, filter, theta criterion, and um, theta criterion, and, 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 what's one I'm missing? Case, theta criterion, EPP. Always forget, always, never forget that EPP in there. All right, I'm gonna draw the sentence. If you haven't already, you can do the same. I'm actually going to be a good kid and like draw my DPs here because it's kind of short sentence so I have the room to do so. Treat sunshine is one word. It's the thing that you saw, right? We're not seeing the sun shining. That's the thing you could do but the structure would look different. Clean my tree up a little bit here, it got a little sloppy. So here is my sentence, right? It's gotta start with the CP, TP, it's this is a past tense, right? I, past tense sentence. This is uh, I saw, right? So here's my subject, inspect TP, I, TP, TP, bar, NP, and bar, and I, past tense. C is the verb. <clears throat> the sunshine, is this a compliment or an adjunct? Well, we can try, right? I saw, right? We have to have something to see if we just said like I see. Makes some sense, but changes the meaning significantly. So we'll say this is a, this one is in fact a compliment, but that on Monday is when you saw it, that that's an adjunct. I saw the sunshine would be just fine without the on Monday. Cool. So we know this is an adjunct coming up of a higher V bar. It's in fact the sister to a V bar where this one is the sister to a V for a quick recap. 
Everything else looks fairly straightforward. First thing we're gonna have to do, of course, drop this past tense down through some affix lowering. That's gonna turn our verb see into saw. Cool. So let's check our constraints now to make sure everything's in order and that this is in fact a cool sentence of English. Uh, let's check the EPP. That one's nice and easy to check. Is there something in spec TP? There absolutely is. Great. Let's check the theta criterion. For this, we need the theta grid for C, which I've provided here. How many roles? Um, yeah, theta roles does C assign to? One to the agent, DP, one to the theme. Did I write theme in there? Yes, it's just hard to read. Theme, DP, how many arguments do we have here? Conveniently two, remember this one doesn't count. Subject and an object. The agent then is assigned to the subject. It's the seer, I, and um, the theme is assigned to this argument down here, the sunshine. Two theta roles to assign, two arguments that secures our one-to-one -one matching from theta role to argument passing the theta criterion. So we've passed EPP, we've passed theta criterion. Now let's look at case. How many DPs do we have here? Three. We have three DPs. So let's go through each of them. Hopefully this is, you're like, yeah, 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 I get it, Ross, I get it. And if that's the case, fine. Just, you know, tune me out for a second. But I wanted to provide you with an example case to see how this is done in a normal sentence when I'm not trying to prove something, right? Get a little practice outside of our Friday sessions. So here, we have this DP. Is it in a case receiving location? Yes. It's in the specif spec TP of a tensed finite clause. But what case is it then going to receive? Nominative case. I'll make it in red this time. So this DP is receiving nominative case. Note, note that it is the DP that's receiving nominative case. And that trickles down through. I'm going to write it down here because it's where I have room to write it. But the assigning goes to the DP. The DP is assigned nominative case by this T head, this finite T. Cool. One, one down, two to go, right? One of our DPs has case. Here's our second DP. Is it in a case? A position that is assigned case? Yeah, sure it is. It's the sister to V. That's where you get accusative case. So the V is going to assign accusative case to this DP. Bam. So accusative case is being assigned from the verb down onto this complement DP accusative case. Two DPs down. All right, third D and last DP over here. <clears throat> on Monday, did I write anything in D? No. On is the preposition, nothing in D, just Monday. B, the on is part of the preposition here, so we need to give case to the DP Monday. Is it in a case, a position to receive case? It also is, right? This DP is the sister to the P head. That's where you get prepositional case, and you get it from the P head itself. So case is assigned there as well. Now when you're doing this at home, or you're doing this on your homework, or you're doing this on your final, or you're doing this for me, it's fine to just list this nominative case. You don't have to draw these arrows of who's assigning it. Just make sure you draw in the case. Nominative, accusative, preposition under each of those, the DPs. And I'll know what you're talking about. That's important. So this is a nice 
example of a sentence and how we do it and how it checks out. We did our underlying structure. We moved things that needed to be moved, like um, the affix lowering from past tense down to see to make saw in I saw the sunshine. And then we checked it through our filters, the case filter, the EPP, and the theta criterion. Just a good sentence. So that is how we do case. Hmm. I'm going to stop early here. Ooh, how's that for a Monday? I'm already posting this a little bit late. And this is a good, um, it's a relatively good stopping point. This means that we'll talk a little bit more about case later on. We're going to extend case to passives and see how case helps us out with problems that are actually very similar to these, this raising conundrum. There's going to be very similar problems to that on for uh, passives. Whew talking today. Maybe that's another good reason to stop after half an hour today. Talking is hard. And it's sunny and I want to go outside, so I, I encourage you to do the same. You can always watch this tomorrow when the weather sucks. So, cool. Take-home points where we reviewed, this is basically just a review session of most of the stuff that we talked about yesterday. We didn't talk about a ton new, but we talked once again about case. Hopefully that reinforces it. Um, we did actually finally take care of our raising problem. And then we just did a little bit of practice on how we draw trees, keeping case in mind in this new, whole new world of case. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you today. I'll catch you guys later this week for more. Um, you don't have homework for quite a while, not till I think the beginning of May, maybe May 1st. So yeah, if there's sunshine, go enjoy it appropriately keeping your social distancing i'll check in next time guys uh, until then catch you later